the last legion created during the first founding. Work on the 20th legion was begun only some few decades before the discovery of their prime arc, Alpharius. However, other reports exist that the legion existed in a prototype form long before that. Indeed, remembrances seem to give contradictory reports on when exactly the Alpha Legion was formed. Regardless, it seems the Legion was created in total secrecy on the Emperor's order. Information on the Legion's own gene seed was made top secret. Like the Salamanders and Space Wolves, the 20th Legion was formed and established largely in separation from the rest of the Legion's Astartes, likely for a very specific purpose. These three specific legions were obliquely called Trefoil by some sources. The earliest known activities of the legion saw it conduct abductions, targeted strikes, and assassinations of the Imperium's enemies on Terra and beyond. The designation for this mysterious special operations units, taking orders from none of the Primarchs who had been discovered at the time, was simply Alpha. For reasons unknown approval to rapidly expand the Alpha Unit's gene seed group was denied by the Emperor, limiting the force to only around 1,000 to 2,000 legionaries. There is some suspicion that this was done because there was a potential problem, or flaw within the legion's gene seed that the Emperor was not able to rectify. Others speculate that the legion was deliberately preserved separately as an isolated unit by the Emperor for special gene seed augmentation in the future that no other space marine legion would ever undergo. The legion all but disappeared from imperial records in the Great Crusade, but some reports of small alpha units operating far from the front lines of the Great Crusade in special missions do exist. These warriors were clearly Astartes, but carried no heraldry and sometimes even operated under the false flag of another legion. The operations they undertook were assassinations, subterfuge, espionage, sabotage, and the recovery of unknown artifacts. They also abducted important individuals from anti-imperial groups. They made it a policy to never leave any witnesses to their activities. However, rumors still spread across the galaxy of a ghost legion. This force became known to bleed enemy forces through black operations and subterfuge before striking from a hundred directions in a mass, lightning attack known as the Harrowing. A dubious account given by Alpharius himself states that he was in fact recovered by the Emperor on Terra himself shortly after, the scattering of the Primarchs, and was put in command of his Ghost Legion from its onset. During this time, his existence was kept a total secret from all save the Emperor, Malkador, and later Constantine Valda. During the Rangdan Xenocides, a representative of the 20th Legion appeared before Lion L. Johnson. Though identifying himself as Alpharius, the representative acknowledged that their prime arc had not yet been found but that he would be in time. This Alpharius, who in a contradictory account, may have in fact been the actual Alpharius, offered aid to Lion L. Johnson against the Rangdan in the hope that one day the Lion could be made War Master. Another account states that Alpharius used this objective as cover as a way to make his way into the Rangdan war zone to recover his long-lost brother Omegan. Whatever the truth, this Alpharius revealed that the 20th Legion preferred L. Johnson as War Master over someone like Rubert Gilemin as they shared similar views on war and secrecy. Though a prime arc, not even L. Johnson had been explicitly aware of the 20th Legion's existence, though he had been privy to rumors of a ghost legion. Later when Alpharius Omegan took open command of the legion, it was young, zealous and completely committed to embracing the prime arc's directions. Alpharius believed that secrecy and fluidity brought success, and taught his legion to apply all such military techniques to both their training and their operations. The legion's victories in the Great Crusade all feature some form of subterfuge, misdirection, or rapid, unexpected movement. Such victories required great skill and dedication to achieve, and the Alpha Legion quickly became an insular and proud formation. It was this martial pride that led to a number of clashes and fights with members of the other legions, particularly the Imperial Fists, Ultramarines, and Death Guard. Also, Conrad Kurz of the Night Lords openly criticized the Alpha Legion's tactics by calling them sinners in a shroud of lies. 
the Thousand Suns Legion discreetly shunned and tried to avoid any contact with the Alpha Legion, although the true cause for this is unknown. However, at the side of Horus Lunar Wolves the Alpha Legion successfully campaigned without incident together with the Dark Angels and the Iron Hands. After Alpharius disagreements with Rubert Gilemin, the Alpha Legion threw themselves even further into their preferred method of operations, largely cutting themselves off from standard imperial practices, and orchestrating greater and greater victorious examples of their approach to the Great Crusade, even when more conventional attacks would have been more efficient. The most notorious example of this took place on the world of Testra Prime, where the Alpha Legion, instead of taking the opportunity to capture the planetary capital to force the world's surrender, allowed the enemy to dig in and defend it so that they could then expertly take the defending forces apart in a number of different ways. After a week of suffering seemingly random mishaps as well as brutal ambushes, the defenders were forced to capitulate, having taken 90% casualties. When asked why the Legion had not taken the simpler strategy, Alpharius is reported to have replied that they avoided it as it would have been too easy. This campaign brought him censure from almost all of his brother Primarchs, only Horus, always impressed by Alpharius and his work, praised the Alpha Legion's skill. In the later stages of the Great Crusade, the Alpha Legion withdrew into the empty space on the Imperium's frontiers. With such examples existing in the Imperial records, it is perhaps easy to see why the Alpha Legion sided with Horus when the War Master made his pact with Chaos. Their martial pride and Alpharius' avoidance of all his brothers apart from Horus seemingly led to their downfall. However, another given reason is that, a scant two years before the Horus heresy began, Alpharius Omegan was contacted by a Xenos organization known as the Cabal, which presented the Primarch with visions of the heresy to come and other predictions of the future as well as knowledge about the nature of chaos. They were shown that the only outcomes of the heresy were that, if the Emperor won, Humanity's existence would be ensured for 10 or 20,000 years of decay before they and the galaxy were consumed by chaos and that, if Horus won, humanity would perish inside two generations, taking the chaos powers into oblivion with them, thus saving the rest of the galaxy. The Alpha Legion was asked to take on their greatest challenge, to defect to the side of Horus and ensure the final destruction of chaos. Alpharius Omegan appeared to accede to this request. The Horus Heresy After the virus bombing of Istvan III, the presumed loyal Alpha Legion was one of the legions sent by the Emperor to destroy Horus at his base on Istvan V. Assigned to the second wave, the legion instead turned on the loyalist first wave. When Raven Guard Commander Bran Nev arrived at Istvan V to retrieve several of what remained of the loyalist forces, including his Primarch Korax the Alpha Legion tried to help Korax escape going as far as killing the commander of a World Eater's battle barge which could have delayed the superior Raven Guard fleet. The Alpha Legion had apothecarii that were masters of face transplantation. They took the faces of fallen Raven Guard marines to transplant them onto their own Astartes. Together with the knowledge gained by digesting the brains of the dead Raven Guard, three Alpha Legion Astartes were able to infiltrate the Raven Guard Legion. Later about 50 Alpha Legion Astartes in the colors of the Raven Guard were sent as reinforcements for the agents. While Omegan could retrieve the data these infiltrators obtained, all of them were killed by the Raven Guard. Learning of the infiltration of the Raven Guard, Horus ordered Ezekiel Arbidon to find Alpha Legion agents inside his own legion at all costs. During the Horus heresy, the Alpha Legion split off from the main body of Horus forces early and did not attack Terra, instead embarking upon a series of delaying actions in an attempt to hold Imperial reinforcements in place. A notable earlier example was attempting to block the White Scars at the Kondak system, but Jagatai Khan was able to maneuver out of their trap. Alpharius or Omegan's dubious agenda came to light at Kondak's, where they were under orders from Horus to recruit the White Scars. Instead, the Alpha Legion fleet there engaged in hostile actions to seemingly provoke the Scars into a fight, after blockading them long enough for them to get word from Rogal Dawn of Horus' treachery. 
Indeed this message was only delivered because Omegan had dispatched forces to destroy an Alpha Legion occupied pylon array blocking the White Scar's communications. Subtly, the Alpha Legion, or at least elements of it made sure that Jagatai Khan would join the Emperor. Not even the Alpha Legion itself was spared from their own schemes. Alpharius was able to manipulate a strike force of members of the Shattered Legions under Shadrach Medicine into eliminating a cell of seemingly loyalist Alpha Legion. During the Horus Heresy the Alpha Legion also engaged in smaller actions, defeating a White Scars force on Talan. During the Battle of the Alaxis Nebula, the Alpha Legion nearly succeeded in destroying the Space Wolves until the Loyalists were saved by the Dark Angels. In addition, a squad of Alpha Legionaries disguised as Ultramarines under Ioni Till nearly succeeded in assassinating Rubert Gilemin on Mikrag. Alpharius was eventually charged by Horus himself to spearhead the traitor advance into the Sol system. Alpharius himself led a large fleet against Pluto in the opening shots of the Solar War. During the battle, Alpharius was seemingly killed by Rogal Dawn, but Omegan effectively took over his responsibilities. Alpharius later reappeared during the muster of traitor forces on Ulanor in the prelude to the Siege of Terror, giving Horus a detailed map of the Sol System's defenses before quitting the war effort. After the setback at Pluto, the Alpha Legion defied Horus' orders to muster for the Siege of Terror and instead delayed Rubert Gilliman's advance as he attempted to reach the throne world. Despite Alpharius's absence from the Siege of Terror, scattered Alpha Legion elements are known to have taken part in the traitor's effort. In addition, an Alpha Legionnaire identifying himself as Alpharius was seen alongside Actia in her attempts to aid Elanius Person and John Grammaticus in their quest. This Alpha Legionnaire informed the group that his other brothers on the planet that were now activated would aid them in fulfilling their objective, post-heresy. In the aftermath of the Horus Heresy, the Alpha Legion did not retreat to the Eye of Terror like the other traitor legions. Instead they moved on into the Galactic East, following new objectives of their own. Whether or not being brought into battle with the Ultramarines was one of these objectives is unknown, but it occurred all the same. On the world of Escrador, the Alpha Legion was assaulted by Ultramarine forces. Alpharius, or Omegan, who had since assumed his mantle since the Battle of Pluto, was reportedly happy with such a development, as it allowed him to demonstrate the superiority of his flexible, multitudinous and unexpected military strategies on the notoriously precise, methodical and perhaps even moribund ultramarines. However, the Alpha Legion Primarch was apparently taken by surprise when Rubert Gilemin departed from his own strictures and led a surprise assault by his elite units on the Alpha Legion headquarters. In the resulting personal combat between Alpharius Omegan and Gilemin, it is believed that Alpharius Omegan was killed. The Alpha Legion responded, not by breaking and fleeing as Gilemin expected, but by turning on the Ultramarine detachment and harrying them, so mercilessly that by the time they had returned to the main body of the Ultramarine force their casualties were almost total. The Ultramarines were driven from the planet in the subsequent battle. Following the battle on Escrador, the Alpha Legion fractured in order to hide from the Imperium. Small, autonomous warbands were left in Imperial space where they set up secret bases in asteroid fields, space hulks and barren worlds. These units launched frequent attacks against military targets that were weakened by the Horus Heresy and still pose a threat to ships settlements and garrisons. They further spread and coordinate chaos cults throughout the galaxy in order to instigate massive revolts against imperial rule. These insurrections are often used to lure imperial forces away from worlds the Alpha Legion wants to attack, paving the way for large-scale assault from inside the Eye of Terror. The Alpha Legion's role in spreading heretical cults has earned them the loathing of the Inquisition which has devoted considerable resources to finding and destroying their secret bases. So far, the Alpha Legion has been declared wiped out by the High Lords of Terror no less than three times, in M31, M32 and M39. These claims have always been disproved by the continued assaults of the Legion. Despite their many heinous acts, 
at least some elements within the Alpha Legion still view themselves as loyal sons of the Emperor. These Alpha Legionaries, such as Occam, see themselves as the most loyal sons for it is they that damn themselves to work from within traitor cells to purge both weak elements of the Imperium, while dealing with serious heretical threats. They see themselves as the Emperor's test, challenging his servants to see if they are worthy to serve him. As for tactics, extensive preparations are made before actually attacking an Imperial target, including using spies and corruption to weaken an enemy's resolve. Not only is an enemy attacked from every angle, but every attack is often coordinated to achieve the most destructive results. Many actions are planned to utilize and support local cultist activity. These cults go to considerable efforts to spread propaganda, perform sabotage, and carry out acts of unrest and rebellion, providing a distraction and weakening the enemy before the Alpha Legion strikes. Furthermore, the Legion has been known to ally themselves with anti-imperial forces including other traitor legions and xenos. On worlds far away from the Eye of Terror, demons are less relied upon since they cannot remain stable for long enough to be useful. If the Alpha Legion succeeds in securing the belief of a local chaos cult they are summoned to add to the variety of their attacks. The Alpha Legion does not fight like any other Chaos Space Marine Legion or Warband. They prefer to avoid direct combat, using subterfuge, infiltration, sabotage, brainwashing, and meticulous multi-year plans to destroy their enemies as opposed to a simple attack. The very identities of Alpha Legion Marines is the subject of mystery. Their supposed identities are frequently aliases which are shared by cell members, meaning the name and identity of one Alpha Legion Marine could actually refer to many. Genetic face-changing technology is utilized to change the appearance of legionaries to confound imperial authorities as to their real identity. Due to this habit of shared aliases, members of the Alpha Legion often refer to themselves as part of a greater collective identity. When they do show themselves, Alpha Legion Marines prefer to let their cultists and underlings do most of the combat, while they themselves wait for the decisive moment to strike or make their escape. The final overwhelming push by the massed forces of the Legion at the precise moment, when the enemy is at its weakest from subterfuge is known as the harrowing. Unlike most of the other Chaos Space Marine Legions, the Alpha Legion rarely operates within the Eye of Terror itself. As a result, they have not been subjected to the time distortion that the warp has affected other traitor marines with, leading many in the Inquisition to debate how the Legion, now, 10,000 years after the Horus Heresy, can still be active. According to Inquisitor Kravin, the Alpha Legion acquires new recruits, genetically modifies them and then trains them for missions all within Imperial territory itself. Even before the Horus Heresy, the Alpha Legion was known to develop special weapons and technologies in secret without Imperial approval or knowledge. Alpha Legion forces were known to operate secret arms factories and caches both inside and outside Imperial space. The Alpha Legion was the first Legion to produce bolter shells specifically designed to penetrate Ceramite power armor, which gave them an early advantage during the drop site massacre. The Legion was also able to acquire small numbers of Mark VI Corvus pattern power armor and reverse engineer it as the Corvus Alpha pattern. The Alpha Legion is known to possess chameleon technologies that allow them to outwardly change their appearances and mimic not only other Legionnaires, but also unaugmented humans. Organization All Space Marine Legions set arduous tasks and trials for potential recruits, but prior to the Horus Heresy the Alpha Legion set these initiation tests for squads, not individuals. Squads succeeded as a group or not at all, foolhardy heroics were frowned upon. The overall plan was paramount and more valuable than any one space marine. This was an extension of the Legion's philosophy that they were a body of one that could strike in many places at once. This complete solidarity with each other expressed itself in other ways. Decisions within the Legion were made in a fairly open and reasonably democratic way, with all ranks including the Alpha Legion's non-Astartes operatives, allowed to interject and comment freely during planning sessions. This freedom was allowed not just on military matters, 
the Alpha Legion internally discussed matters of philosophy and galactic policy that would have been forbidden, or frowned upon in other imperial institutions. Later recruits for the Legion were selected by the Primarch primarily based on high intelligence and personal initiative. Alpha Legion equivalents of companies, battalions, and chapters were known as harrows, cohorts, hosts and instruments. However, those structures have never stayed permanent and were formulated and broken down on an as-needed basis. During the Great Crusade era some Alpha Legionaries were notably tall even for members of the Astartes, physical attributes which suited Alpharius' focus on misdirection. For the Primarch put into place a directive that, as far as possible, all Alpha Legion Marines had to attempt to look alike, and the face they patterned themselves on was that of Alpharius and Omega. When asked by non-Legion members, all Legionaries gave their names as Alpharius, even when more than one was present. The Legion also made a habit of recruiting non-Astarte specialists in every theater and campaign they entered, commonly members of the Imperial Armed Forces. These operatives often remained in their original position, ready to respond to Alpha Legion commands. Compromised operatives were not discarded if it could be avoided, and Alpha Legionaries would go to great lengths to retain them or hide their existence, lengths that included the fatal silencing of other Imperials. Operatives were tattooed with a small Hydra symbol. Even less is known about the internal organization of the Alpha Legion since the Horus Heresy than was known before. On occasions there have been successful assassinations of members of the Legion thought to be high-ranking officers, but their removal has had little visible effect on Alpha Legion operations. It is believed that since the Heresy the Alpha Legion operates as independent cells hidden throughout the Imperium, coordinating various chaos cultist activities to subvert Imperial rule. While these cells operate independently of one another and destroying one will not affect the effort of their overall mission, the Legion still loosely coordinates its actions across the galaxy. Who is coordinating these efforts and how they are doing so is largely a mystery to the Imperium, but many believe they achieve this through operatives. These figures are apparently human, but have undergone limited psychohypnotic therapy to make them absolutely loyal to the Legion. These operatives, fully infiltrated into Imperial society, act as the link between Alpha Legion cells and cultists and are their primary method of galaxy-wide communication. The Legion symbol, the Hydra, is a multi-headed mythical beast which could keep fighting even if one of its heads was cut off. This legend seems to reflect the Alpha Legion's command structure, as well as echoing its doctrine of multiple attacks. Alpharius believed in planning and coordination, he always sought alternatives and multiple solutions to any given problem, with different elements working together for the end result. These doctrines, thoroughly embraced by the Legion as a whole, have apparently been continued by the traitors and have proved effective, especially in the disparate and secretive way they now operate. Thank you for listening to this entry from the Warhammer 40,000 Lexicanum.